The deaths of Peter Clemenza and Tom Hagen in the Godfather saga have left fans with a multitude of unanswered questions and theories. These iconic characters were integral to the Corleone family's operations, and their off-screen deaths have fueled endless speculation. While contractual disputes and creative decisions in the real world explain their absence, the in-universe explanations have become the subject of much debate. Starting with Peter Clemenza, who was notably absent in The Godfather Part II, with only a brief mention of his death during Anthony's first communion. In a casual conversation, Fredo asks if Clemenza had a heart attack, to which Chi-Chi cryptically replies, that was no heart attack. This single line has sparked endless speculation among fans, leading to a variety of theories about what really happened to Clemenza. Adding fuel to this fire is the conflict with the Rosado brothers. After Clemenza's death, a war erupted between the Corleones and the Rosados over territory. Frankie Patangeli, who took over Clemenza's operations, refused to honor what Rosados claimed was a promise from Clemenza to cede certain territories to them after his death. Pentangeli insisted Clemenza had made no such promise and in fact despised the Rosados. This dispute not only caused a rift between the Corleones and Hyman Roth, who backed the Rosados, but also led Pentangeli to suspect foul play in Clemenza's death. His paranoia stemmed from the belief that Clemenza would never have promised anything to the Rosados, whom he allegedly hated. From this, a theory arose that Michael, recognizing Clemenza's potential ambitions or unhappiness, chose to get rid of this possible threat. Maybe Clemenza didn't agree with Michael's choice to shift operations to Nevada or how he dealt with the Rosado brothers. Michael had a history of taking out even close supporters to keep his power. But this idea doesn't really work when you think about how loyal Clemenza was his whole life. He was a strong friend, not someone who suddenly became a problem. The idea that Michael would need to take him out seems unlikely and doesn't fit either of their characters. Another theory suggests a sneakier method, slowly poisoning Clemenza to make it look like heart disease. This would explain why his death seemed natural at first glance but was actually foul play. This idea plays into the paranoia that often grips those in the mob world. In the dangerous underworld they inhabit, where enemies could be closer than friends, this theory suggests that someone in the family, or maybe an outsider, had been gradually weakening Clemenza, leading to his eventual heart failure. But again, there's not much proof of this theory, and it feels more like an embellishment of the already dangerous world Clemenza inhabited. However, after considering all the evidence from the films, novels, and expanded Godfather universe, I believe there's a simpler, more grounded explanation. In my opinion, Clemenza's death was exactly what it appeared to be, a natural heart attack. This view aligns with Mark Weingartner's novel, The Godfather Returns, which portrays Clemenza's final moments in a mundane yet poignant scene. The aging capo suffers a heart attack while cooking breakfast for his crew in a diner. After he collapses onto the grill, his silk suit catches fire, a tragically fitting end for a man who lived life large. To me, this explanation rings truest. Clemenza was 70 years old, overweight, and had lived a life full of rich food, constant stress, and the ever-present danger of the criminal underworld. A heart attack seems not just plausible, but likely. As for Pentangeli, the old-timer struggled to navigate the shifting dynamics within the family and was quick to suspect foul play, particularly pointing fingers at the Rosado brothers whom he despised. In the criminal world, paranoia and suspicion run deep, especially when someone of Clemenza's rank dies unexpectedly. Pentangeli's immediate jump to conspiracy reflects this mindset, but without any concrete evidence, it's more a reflection of the ever-present distrust in that world rather than a sign of actual foul play. While Clemenza's death remains shrouded in ambiguity, the fate of Tom Hagen presents as an even more complex and tragic tale. Hagen, more than just a conciere, was family to the Corleones. Despite his Irish-German heritage marking him as an outsider, his role in the first two films was crucial, serving as a calm, calculating counterbalance to Michael's increasing ruthlessness. However, his glaring absence in The Godfather Part Three, with only a brief, poignant reference to his fate, during a conversation between Michael Corleone and Tom's son, Andrew, who had become a priest, Michael mentions Tom's passing. He says, your father was a great lawyer. He didn't get to see you ordained. This single line is the only acknowledgement of Tom's death in the film, a surprisingly understated end for such a pivotal character. This led to a flood of theories, each more intricate than the last. The real-world reason for Tom's absence is well known. Robert Duvall's salary dispute with the studio led to the character being written out. This decision, driven by contract negotiations rather than a narrative necessity, left a significant void in the film. 
Tom Hagen's presence could have offered a more nuanced exploration of Michael's character and the Corleone's family internal dynamics. In the expanded universe of The Godfather, particularly in Mark Weingartner's novel, Tom's death is far from mundane. The Godfather's Revenge paints a vivid and brutal picture of Tom's final moments, orchestrated by Nick Gerace, a character whose complex history with the Corleone family adds layers of intrigue to the story. Nick Gerace, also known as Fausto Dominic Jr., was a former boxer with some college education brought into the Corleone family by Sal Tessio. He rose quickly through the ranks, becoming Tessio's most trusted soldier. When Tessio's betrayal was uncovered, Nick proved his loyalty to Michael by executing Tessio, cementing his position as a trusted capo. However, the relationship between Nick and Michael soured. Michael's attempt to eliminate Nick in a rigged plane crash backfired and Nick surviving and going underground to plot his revenge. This betrayal fueled Nick's resentment and ambition, leading him to view Michael's leadership as flawed and believing he could do better. Nick's plan for revenge culminated in his targeting of Tom Hagen. Tom had been working to end the Attorney General's crusade against the Mafia and had just negotiated a plan to install Senator Jerry as the new AG. It was at this crucial moment that Nick struck, kidnapping Tom on his way back to his hotel. The novel describes in chilling detail how Nick forced Tom to drive to the Everglades, where he knocked him unconscious, bound him to the steering wheel, lowered the car's windows, and sank the vehicle into the murky waters. In his final moments, Tom reflected on his life, his family, and his long relationship with the Corleones, facing his end with a mix of resignation and poignant recollection. Nick's brutal message to Michael, a dead baby alligator with Tom's wallet in its mouth wrapped in Miami newspapers, echoed the symbolic gesture of the criminal underworld, reminiscent of the message sent after Luca Brasi's death in the original novel. In my opinion, this account of Tom's death captures the essence of the Godfather saga. It underscores the unforgiving nature of the world the Corleones inhabited, where even the most trusted advisor could meet a violent end. The complexity of Nick Gerasi's character, from loyal capo to vengeful enemy, illustrates the shifting allegiances and personal ambitions that constantly threaten the family's stability. The novels by Mark Weingartner, including The Godfather Returns and The Godfather's Revenge, while not officially approved by Paramount Pictures, offered a compelling bridge between the events of The Godfather Part II and Part III. They fill in crucial gaps in the narrative, proving depth and context to the Corleone saga that the films alone couldn't provide. The deaths of Clemenza and Tom Hagen, as depicted in the expanded universe novels, presents intriguing possibilities while raising questions about their place in the film series canon. Clemenza's heart attack seems plausible given his lifestyle, while the dramatic circumstances of Tom's murder add a new layer of complexity to the Corleone saga, echoing themes of betrayal and revenge. Which theory about their deaths resonates more with you? Do you think the novel's portrayal aligns with what we saw in the films? The ambiguity allows you to draw your own conclusions. Their absence underscores Michael Corleone's isolation and the gradual decline of the family's power. What do you think about all of this? Share your thoughts in the comments below.